Damos paso a la siguiente sesión, el panel que os adelantaba al comienzo, que va a girar sobre la seguridad en los entornos nativos de cloud. Como hemos explicado eh, y lo han mencionado Agustín y Simon, la transformación digital eh, es uno de los, el cloud es uno de los primeros pasos en la transformación digital de toda empresa, pero también es uno de los primeros eh, problemas que preocupan a los directivos de las organizaciones, especialmente, por supuesto, en este nuevo escenario que nos toca vivir, donde dependemos prácticamente al 100% de ese tipo de entornos y nuestra prioridad pasa por securizar los datos y no perder eficiencia en el proceso. Este panel va a estar moderado por Igor Unanuez, CTO y cofundador de S21SEC, que ya le tenemos por aquí dentro de la empresa. Ha trabajado como director técnico, director general de S21SEC Labs y CEO de Lookwa, producto de S21SEC, ha participado en varias ocasiones en competiciones de la startup de McKinsey, Keiretsu Forum y Foro Capital Pymes y ha asesorado y colaborado en varios programas de formación relacionados con el emprendimiento de la Universidad de Deusto. A su vez, a su vez ha sido mentor de startups que forman parte del programa Equinmas de San Sebastián, es licenciado en Ingeniería de Telecomunicaciones por la Universidad Politécnica de Cataluña. Muy buenas tardes, Igor. Buenas tardes, Mónica. Gracias por la introducción. Bueno, hoy pues nos toca hablar de... Sí. Perdón, para Mónica. presentar a los, a los ponentes y expertos que te van a acompañar y ya te dejo, Igor, todo tuyo. Gracias. Eh, contamos con David Groot, que es CTO de FireEye. Eh, David es reconocido por su experiencia en la respuesta ante incidentes, security operations, seguridad de la información, big data y threat intelligence. Se ha trabajado en empresas como Augeo Software, McAfee, en diferentes roles de influencia y lleva de, de, desde 2016 trabajando como EMEA CTO en FireEye. Así que bienvenido. Welcome también, David. Buenas Además, tardes. estamos hola, eh, con Peter Sandquil, eh, SI, director EMEA de Checkpoint. Peter lleva más de 25 años enfocado en la seguridad, más de 20 trabajando en Checkpoint en importantes cargos, gestionando grandes equipos. Así que, welcome también, Peter. Y eh, contamos también con Iker del Fresno, director comercial de Aruba HP. Comenzó su carrera profesional como ingeniero de sistemas, pasando por ingeniero preventa de networking y seguridad, recalando en 2016 en Aruba como territory manager de la zona norte y actualmente desempeña el cargo de director comercial de Aruba España. Muchas eh, gracias a todos por acompañarnos. Solo recordaros que podéis dejar vuestras preguntas en el chat que se responderán después todas por email para no retrasarnos en la agenda de este Next Secure. Y ahora sí, Igor, muchísimas gracias. Lo dejo en tus manos, todo tuyo. Muy bien, Mónica, gracias. Bueno, esta tarde tenemos un, un panel importante, ¿no? Hablar de cloud y además componentes eh, estrellas, como tenemos aquí, de grandes compañías ¿no? eh, mundiales dedicadas a la ciberseguridad. Y bueno, en el mundo de cloud queríamos entrar directamente a hablar de lo que nos ha transformado en el teletrabajo. ¿no? Todos sabemos que el COVID eh, ha obligado a todas las compañías a empezar a arrancar sus servicios en la nube. Muchas aplicaciones que nos han permitido hacer ese, ese teletrabajo. ¿verdad? Y las estadísticas también nos dicen cómo ha cambiado desde el 19 al 2020. ¿no? Eh, nos habla incluso de empresas que aún dicen que no utilizan. Eh, plataformas cloud, ¿no? Y el 2019 decían que un 25% de ellos eh, no, no lo consumían, ¿no? Y este año ha bajado al 11% según las estadísticas. Bueno, probablemente eh, el, el uso de cloud que se refiere en estas compañías cuando contestan que no es probablemente pues eh, las eh, plataformas eh, más conocidas como IaaS o PaaS, ¿no? Eh, plataformas de Azure o, o Google Cloud o, o Amazon. Cualquiera de ellas probablemente no, pero software as a service o aplicaciones nube, el 100% de las compañías ya lo estarán utilizando. ¿no? Por tanto, podemos decir que ya el, el mundo de cloud lo tenemos todos y lo estamos usando al 100%. Y en este entorno se habla de la seguridad compartida, un concepto eh, que a veces no se sabe muy bien hasta dónde está cada uno como responsable de seguridad. ¿no? Ahí hablamos de la seguridad que aportan las propias plataformas o la seguridad que aportan las propias compañías o tienen sus responsables de seguridad. ¿no? Incluso internamente la compañía ya se está hablando como puestos de responsabilidad como Business Information Security Managers, eh, que paralelamente con el CISO velarían por la seguridad de la compañía y sus datos. ¿verdad? Bueno, pues según ustedes, ¿cómo, ¿cómo veis este reto? ¿Cómo veis este reto de afrontar la ciberseguridad en el mundo cloud con esta seguridad compartida con los proveedores cloud. Por ejemplo, podéis contestar cuando queráis, ¿eh? pero si quieres empieza Riker, eh, eh, tú, luego cualquiera de vosotros podéis, podéis continuar. Muy 
no te oímos, Iker, no sé si lo tienes en mute. ¿Puedes mirar, por favor? Perdonad, sí. sí eh, perdonad. Ahora sí. Gracias. Eh, lo primero era un repaso al tsunami que ha supuesto eh, el teletrabajo eh, en este país. ¿no? Hemos pasado de, de tener un instrumento que abarcaba el 7,5% de la población, más o menos, en 2019, a que bueno, con esta situación eh, nos hayamos encontrado con un montón de gente que de, de la noche a la mañana ha tenido que que ir a casa y hacer un teletrabajo. Esto, esto ha supuesto, desde el punto de vista de amenazas y riesgos, una situación uh, realmente curiosa. La necesidad ha podido cualquier tipo de prevención y aunque todo el mundo ya está con sus con su horas de servicio, etc., ha tenido que trasladar a su, a su entorno doméstico una, una, una conectividad para poder, para poder trabajar. Y esto realmente ha, ha sido un impacto y, y un desafío para, para la seguridad. Entonces, Realmente un análisis de, joder, cómo nos hemos encontrado en una situación en la que no esperábamos eh, encontrarnos y que llevábamos hablando de software as a service, que todo el mundo podía teletrabajar, hablábamos de conciliación, hablábamos de flexibilidad y realmente apenas un 7% de la población lo hacía. Esto realmente es disruptivo, nos vamos a una situación en la que, primero, muchísima gente ya se ha incorporado a, a mecanismos de teletrabajo, obligados o no, y probablemente de este, de este impacto pasemos a una época post-COVID en lo que haya llegado para quedarse en un porcentaje muy amplio. ¿Vale? Y la gente se, eh, realmente se plantee eh, una estructura de teletrabajo mucho más amplia de la que se hace. Las implicaciones en cuanto a la seguridad están está siendo brutales, ¿no? La mayoría de la gente, pues bueno, ha, ha estado utilizando una conexión simplemente VPN, es el VPN para, para conectarse y salir del paso, en algunos casos con un PC propio, un PC doméstico, una situación. Entonces, desde el punto de vista de Aruba, nosotros lo vemos una situación en la que es para, para llegar a todas formas cloud, desde de donde lo hagas, eh, tenemos que tener un control de del acceso y de, desde el edge hasta el cloud, uh, para, poder, para poder tener claro uh, cómo securizamos uh, nuestra infraestructura para poder conectarnos a, la, a, la, a las herramientas como servicio y a poder dar ese servicio en cloud. Entonces, por aquí, desde luego, lo primero, aparte de la desesperación global que hemos tenido todos de trabajar en casa con, junto con niños de las habitaciones, el tema de la seguridad está siendo muy importante. Uh, los problemas que ha habido de, ha habido de malware, más phishing, muchas más vulnerabilidades de... de bueno, aplicaciones de colaboración, eh, que os voy a contar, Las aplicaciones de colaboración que han pasado de 30 millones de conexiones diarias de videoconferencias a 300 millones eh, durante el COVID, una muy conocida, con, con grandes problemas de seguridad, una solución que aparentemente no pretendía ser tan masiva, se ha convertido en tal y ha empezado a, a cambiar sus, a su situación de seguridad en estas plataformas de seguridad de servicios. Entonces, desde nuestro punto de vista, eh, tenemos que plantearnos una situación pues, que ya veníamos comentando, que es el cero atrás, ¿no? Entre la, la ciberseguridad ha crecido, los riesgos han crecido, y al final nuestro borde, nuestra eh, frontera, ya no es ningún, en ninguno de los casos ni la propia empresa, ni incluso mecanismos que, que ya teníamos establecidos para trabajar fuera de ella. El borde se ha, se ha llevado directamente, se ha extendido mundial, hasta el hasta de vuelve a casa en entornos que son domésticos, inseguros, con otro tipo de conectividad. Por lo tanto, nosotros entendemos que desde este punto de vista pues, hay que atacar la solución a, entendiendo que hay que segurizar pues, desde, con cero atrás el riesgo desde tu borde y tu borde no deja de ser otro que eh, la propia casa. Pues hay que, hay que hacer un, identificar los diferentes grados de, de sensibilidad de los datos de, de la empresa y, bueno, y otorgar de servicios de acceso los necesarios para cada uno de los empleados no vas a dar permisos de más ni de menos, sino funciona su perfil para reducir las vulnerabilidades, tanto a nivel externo como ataques internos, etc. Hacer una seguridad distintiva en función del empleado que está dentro de la compañía afuera, eso digamos que ya se ha acabado. Esto eh, lo vamos a hacer en función del uso del perfil y cómo, lo, y cómo va a atacar este tipo de, de solución y cómo se va a conectar a ese cloud y a esas soluciones a esas áreas. Sí. Muchas gracias, Iker. Uh, Peter, how do you see these uh, shared responsibilities? What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, everybody. Apologize for speaking in English to you. Uh, one of the key terms that we see that is being used in the, when people speak about public clouds is uh, shared responsibility. And I, for one, started challenging that with my customers a while back, where I said, look, It should really not be called shared responsibility because sharing means you have something in common that you will both be at, uh, spending time and attention to. And the reality with public clouds is that the public cloud vendor, uh, such as AWS or Azure, 
will be offering you a very secure cloud environment. Their data centers are more physically secured than we would ever have our data centers secured. They're more high available and more resilient than we would ever build them. However, the second you start putting applications, data, infrastructures, whatever on it, um, that is solely your responsibility. So Microsoft is not going to protect your data when you put it in a database and you decide to allow the whole internet access without any authentication. People will take your data and Microsoft will, will be responsible for 0%. So what I started doing is to suggest to my customers, don't talk about shared responsibility, but rather speak about split responsibility as effectively each takes part of uh, the part that they need to take care of. Um, and the reason why I feel so strong about it is that uh, customers tend to get lulled into believing that, well, if it's a shared responsibility and it's Microsoft or Amazon, they're so big, I must be okay if I don't do a 100% job. And the reality, what we see to date is, um, well, obviously they're not, it's, that's logical, uh, but the non-security people that make that call on not having to do the work on making cloud environments more secure or doing at least the same level of security as they did in the on-premises deployments, um, this is where the risks are coming in. This is where people start losing databases, uh, private information, business data, etc. So in summary, I, I don't think we should call it shared responsibility. It should be split responsibility. And you, as an owner of the data, are 100% responsible yourself, nobody else. Mm. Muy bien. Es un concepto diferente, ¿no? Es en seguridad compartida eh, versus seguridad dividida, ¿no? En, es una buena idea. Um, David, and how do you think? It's different in shared uh, responsibility and, and split it responsibilities? How do you see that? Uh, I will say uh, globally, uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon and buenas tardes uh, to, to everyone on the call. Uh, the same, I will uh, do it in English uh, with my French accent. I will be, it will, I hope it will be okay for everyone. Uh, to, to your question, I will say, first of all, I do not see any challenge on the cloud. I see a lot of opportunities. It might be opportunity attackers, it might be opportunity businesses, or uh, even opportunities for the defenders. But it's a world of opportunities. I said by uh, Simon during uh, the opening session, uh, we need really to embrace the, ch the change and really to see where we can grow up the business and be faster, better, and, and really generate added value to all those, this cloud discussion. To come back to what said Peter, I I'm fully agree uh, with the comment that uh, we are probably talking on splits and not sharing. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Amazon, Azure, and all those kind of big names, uh, they are protecting their uh, environment very well. They are doing a really strong job to give you access to the platform, to the infrastructure, and also uh, to publish different products and technologies in order to secure uh, the full environment. However, uh, you are responsible of your data. And for that, one of the biggest challenge for the companies uh, will be to create the right profile to uh, be sure that they are really building up the right teams who will uh, understand all the details of the cloud platform. It might be uh, new legal uh, people with new uh, curriculum, uh, able to understand really the, those responsibilities uh, in the cloud world. Uh, it might be also uh, technical people who, who might be able to better understand what are the challenges and how to protect and how they need to monitor uh, the uh, cloud environment. And I think it's clearly something where we need to focus on is all around the monitoring, because right now the cloud adoption is a little bit kind of blind, meaning that each business unit is investing on his own needs and uh, the security team are pretty blind on what happens really and how it's secure. And I think one of the biggest challenges is just to, I would say, cut off this blindness being able to see, to get the visibility and the information in order to confirm or to deny uh, the security effectiveness level of security. And, and I think this is probably one of the biggest uh, challenge uh, for, for now. And um, maybe also, and I will, I will stop there for this first part of the discussion, but we, we need to think about um, the uh, private cloud because we are talking a lot around the, the cloud, uh, the public cloud, 
with uh, Azure, AWS, and other providers. But we need to think also uh, about uh, the private cloud. We have a lot of companies who are starting to deploy uh, Kubernetes or Dockers, and they are building their own cloud. And many governments also are doing it in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and in this case, they need to really to think about how to secure uh, this, uh, those infrastructures and how to get the right visibility to build up the right groundfall uh, and to be able to protect themselves and to understand what happened. And I think uh, when we are talking about cloud, we need to really be careful to not forget the, pre the private side of the cloud and talking about private and public from there, starting to think about security processes, businesses, and people knowledge that we need to apply uh, on those cloud infrastructures. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you, David. Ah, sin duda, la gestión del, de la infraestructura cloud eh, bueno, tiene unos retos importantes. ¿no? Y luego entraremos a ese punto. Pero antes quería lanzar otra pregunta. ¿no? El gasto en seguridad ha ido creciendo enormemente. ¿no? Y, y todos los informes eh, nos dicen que los, los presupuestos de las compañías ¿no? llegan a ser un 10% ¿no? en, en, en todo lo que es el, el cloud. ¿no? Y el 2020 todo esto va a subir. ¿no? Más del 55%. En, ya dicen que gastan ¿no? todo ese dinero en, 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 en la nube, ¿no? en la seguridad de la nube. Y esto nos lleva a una pregunta, ¿no? Tanto consumo de ciberseguridad en la nube, también nos exige profesionales de ciberseguridad en nube. Y esto está cada vez más difícil, ¿no? Los profesionales de este sector están en auge desde el punto de vista de que están siendo contratados masivamente y no son tan fáciles de encontrar, ¿no? Eh, eso hace que encarezca y dificulte ¿no? el contratar las personas eh, con, este, con este perfil, con lo que las compañías tienen que decidir si buscarse una persona fuera o formar una persona interna dentro de la compañía en, en todo lo que conlleva eh, tanto la ciberseguridad como otros conceptos de la nube ¿no? para, la, para su gestión y mantenimiento. ¿Qué opináis sobre este reto? ¿Cómo deberían afrontar las compañías hoy en día el, todo este reto de tener profesionales especializados en, en cloud? Cualquiera de vosotros, eh, y que si queremos seguir el mismo orden, como queráis. Venga. Eh, bueno, pues por romper un poco, eh, al final, eh, no solamente es que la estructura de profesional de la ciberseguridad es, una, es un perfil súper especializado, sino que la necesidad, ya estamos en un entorno en general de tecnológico en el que requerimos ponernos al día constantemente, pero este tipo de perfil aún lo es más. Las amenazas son cada vez más rápidas, tiene que estar mucho más al día, la evolución de, de las plataformas también lo es. Con lo cual, el tener una necesidad de, de tener unos profesionales que estén tan constantemente eh, aprendiendo, primero no es fácil encontrarlo, por eso los perfiles son tan, uh, tan caros y, y no es fácil mantenerlo incluso ni retenerlo a la propia compañía, porque los retos para, para las compañías en ese aspecto pues, pues también vienen por la parte de retención de, de retención de talento, porque realmente es algo muy demandado. Y aquí, bueno, aquí vienen un poco las ventajas que, que servicios como, como las empresas de, de S21, como la empresa S21 se puede dar a la a las diferentes compañías, ¿no? Y ese, esa implicación en ese sourcing de IT eh, para servicios de ciberseguridad que se, que se antoja imprescindible en determinados segmentos. Al final, evidentemente, tú tienes que tener como compañía un profesional que sea capaz de, de regular y gestionar estos servicios, pero por detrás tienes que tener unos servicios tan amplios y tienes que estar también de tantas cosas que se hace imposible trabajar en este ámbito sin tener detrás el apoyo de un, de un sourcing que te, que te que identifique un poco las necesidades, que evolucione más rápido que tú, que pueda cambiar incluso ese personal. Uh, que no siempre sea el mismo y que se haga cargo de esa parte. Para mí, yo creo que, y cada vez más, eh, las empresas eh, tienen un, un perfil tecnológico de ciberseguridad eh, limitado y van incorporando unos sourcing de servicios de ciberseguridad que les puedan mantener en esa, eh, y que puedan hacer que se enfoquen en su propio negocio cada una de las compañías, ¿vale? no olvidemos que cada una se dedica a diferentes ámbitos y que puedan tener detrás el respaldo eh, pues, de, pues de un shock, de una solución, de un servicio, eh, de un sourcing de, de recursos para poder eh, tener eh, estos recursos a, a su disposición con esa evolución constante que necesita el mercado. ¿no? Mm. Bien, Peter. Yes. What do you think about this uh, question uh, about uh, this problem no? and hiring? these professionals in the cloud that now is more and more difficult. How do you think that the organization need to um, need to work with this issue? They need to uh, train their own people and, or they need to hire external people even if they are very expensive? 
So that's a, a, a broad question. Bueno, esta es una cuestión que a lo mejor entramos en contacto que es una cloud expert y tendremos que llevar a los movimientos a las nubes tenemos que pensar en qué vamos a construir en la, en la nube y lo que será tendrá mejores ventajas y lo que vamos a invertir esta es la primera medida y lo que nos van a dar estoy de acuerdo con esto no es solamente en nubes públicas, también en las privadas. Yo veo aquí un gran reto. Es esta seguridad a lo mejor no es tan suficiente de, para todas las personas, bueno, las nubes. Y seguramente los profesionales de seguridad. Pues, security, they don't apply security, they're just looking for usability and speed of delivery. And because of that, they will surpass existing network security departments, which is true. We, we see it happening all the time. Um, if our security departments internally have not yet waken up and realized that cloud is real and we do, we don't have enough knowledge, I would consider that to already be late as uh, these cloud technologies are going to enter or have already entered into your organization, whether it is public or private, and they introduce new attack vectors that we didn't think of before. For instance, identity will become much more important, and the fact that the whole world could, could access your, um, your stored data also makes uh, the, the necessity to be much more compliant, uh, very interesting. So, you want to much more than in the past when you had everything hidden behind your perimeter gateway. Make sure that your security posture is one, defined, and two, monitored and enforced. It's day that can do this. I can tell you from personal experience, it's very hard to find uh, cloud security experts. They are a rare breed. They do exist, but they come in small numbers. And when they come, they come at a high price. So um, I would say that the answer to your question is, is by fault. We need to understand that cloud is already here. And if we haven't done anything, we need to speed up development of our own people. Next to that, we need to make sure that we acquire enough knowledge on what it means to run business in a cloud context. And um, that could be done through influencers like Accenture or Deloitte. It could be done by auditors who will audit your security posture in the cloud. But what we also see more and more, and this is kind of preaching for my own parish here, is an acquisition that we did that does something that's called in the markets as security posture management. So how compliant is my cloud environment to the rules that I've set? And again, you can only, only set the rules once you know what to monitor. But getting things visible is a very first start. And then uh, you can start with simple stuff, like if I have a database, the data should be encrypted. If it's not encrypted, it shouldn't be accessible from the internet. And th this may sound very logical, but we find tons of customers every single day that don't even apply these very small practices in their cloud environments. So there's a lot of education to go on. Um, young kids, for friends that are in IT, I recommend them whatever you can, get yourself educated in scripting, automation and anything related to cloud and you will have a golden job for the next two or three decades to come we need to train our people on the task that we want to take internal and we need probably to ask people and to hire external people for a specific task that we don't want to manage at the end of the, of the day it will be probably um i would say uh, a good preparation work for the companies to try to understand how they are using the cloud what are the outcomes, where they think that they will need their own resources, and where they think that they will need to externalize uh, their resources. As an example, uh, if you are using cloud uh, workloads to deliver your business, do you need to be an expert in security to manage them? For some companies, the answer will be yes, because they are running uh, some critical business where they need to manage their own security. For some others, the, the answer will be no. And in this case, they will probably externalize the security to a 24 by 7 SOC, 
with the ability to manage their security for themselves. Same question for forensics or some question for, uh, let's say, uh, investigation. The, 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 big, the biggest question will be always, do I need those kind of profile? If yes, let's do it internally, let's train people. If no, let's externalize uh, this kind of needs. Coming back to the first question regarding, uh, I would say the balance in between people internal and people external, I think we need to train the people in general, at least on a 101 level in the cloud, in order to understand what are their responsibilities and the associated risks. As we said at the beginning, this is not because uh, you have this kind of shared responsibility that you don't need to do anything. And I think it's part of the DNA that we need to ingest or to inject to all the employees in order to train them at least at the right level. And for the rest uh, of the game, uh, we can select as companies and for critical businesses, what we want, to, which kind of profile we want to train. One of the biggest added value I see there uh, in terms of market, we all know that the market is pretty stretched in general, in, in all, all, I would say, uh, job position and job profile. And we have probably there a really good opportunity for companies and for uh, even countries to try to build up center of excellence and try to build up the new employers for tomorrow. As uh, mentioned by Peter, uh, if you are right now at school and you want to learn something and you want to learn something will be applicable and probably where you will get a job just after the schools, cloud security is one of those. And it might be clearly something good for government, for companies to build up their own schools, their own programs in order to build up this kind of workforce and to be ready to tackle the world. Because the number of job, or job, of job in security and specifically in cloud security will only grow up during the next 10, 15, 20 years. Let's do it. Let's tackle the challenge. Let's make it, make it an opportunity for the business and let's create the new workforce for tomorrow. And this is for me, uh, clearly, I will say the, the biggest conclusion on this specific question. Let's train people and let's select what you want to do by yourself and where you think that it might be better to ask the expert to manage it for you. Sí, pues bueno, sin duda el, la ciberseguridad y el mundo cloud tienen cierta similitud, ¿no? Tanto en, en la dificultad de contratar personal especializado como, en, como también el crecimiento ¿no? en, que hay en el mercado. Eh, entrando al terreno de lo que comentábamos antes de la dificultad de las configuraciones de los entornos cloud, ¿no? Porque son entornos altamente flexibles, son muy escalables, eh, contenedores, serverless, tenemos un montón de facilidades para iniciar, arrancar nuevas aplicaciones, pero estos entornos a su vez crean grandes crevaderos de cabeza a, a los responsables de seguridad. ¿no? Tienen que lidiar con, con la seguridad de estas plataformas y, y el 15% hacen relación por una falta de visibilidad y otros, pues el eh, 32% hacen relación más a la falta de, o a malas configuraciones, ¿no? los errores que se cometen en la gestión de esos sistemas que al final se complican. ¿no? Esto nos llevaría a un par de preguntas. Comencemos con, con el primero. ¿no? En muchas organizaciones se usan eh, no las plataformas como tal, sino software as a service, ¿no? eh, muchas, ¿no? además, y diferentes departamentos de las organizaciones, pues áreas como recursos humanos, marketing, que eh, utilizan directamente las plataformas, incluso las gestionan ellos, porque no requieren incluso ni conectar con plataformas internas, con lo cual, casi sin pasar ¿no? con la revisión de seguridad o la gestión de la seguridad, eh, ponen en marcha estas plataformas, las aplican, utilizan datos o información confidencial dentro de estas plataformas. Eh, ¿Cómo se puede gestionar esta amenaza? Porque realmente existen, pueden haber problemas detrás de este uso no controlado de, de, de soluciones cloud. Eh, sí, al final... Eh... Esto es un tema de responsabilidad compartida, ¿no? Que hemos, eh, hemos empezado un poco la, la discusión sobre, sobre esto, sobre la figura del viso, la del CISO. Hay que entender que cuando, cuando tú sacas de tu... Hay unas ventajas y unos inconvenientes cuando sales del entorno on-premise y te vas al entorno cloud. Eh, evidentemente, hay muchísimas más ventajas, por eso casi todo el mundo eh, está en un entorno de algún tipo, ya sea con un software a servicio, ya sea otro tipo de servicio. Eh, pero todo el mundo tiene que entender que, que hay una responsabilidad compartida en el uso de los datos que, que hace que 
tanto los propios desarrolladores como de aplicaciones que se habían preocupado específicamente del desarrollo de su aplicación y le fijase, en teoría, le podía dar igual si era un entorno cloud o un entorno on-premise, uh, como los propios usuarios de aplicativos ya sea, de cualquier departamento de la compañía, es como bueno, marketing, recursos humanos, finanzas, uh, tiene que haber una sensibilización clara, sensibilización clara de lo que es la seguridad en este entorno. Eh, yo creo que en ese aspecto estamos trabajando bastante bien todas las compañías eh, para concienciar eh, en el uso y la responsabilidad compartida, eh, en la responsabilidad compartida a la hora, a la hora de, de entender que cualquier uso de una aplicación corporativa, ya sea un premio en cloud, requiere, requiere una, una, una responsabilidad en el uso y en, y, en el, y en el desarrollo de la misma para ese posible uso. Entonces, pues aquí eh, no, yo creo que ya ninguna, eh, ninguna empresa eh, concibe la idea de tener, de, de desarrollar cualquier nuevo aplicativo, de ponerlo en marcha en cloud uh, y, y no tener implicado a todo el equipo de ciber y de ciberseguridad y ciberseguridad en cloud implicado en la propia compañía a la hora de decir cómo lo vamos a implementar, de qué manera, cómo se va a poner en marcha, qué aplicar, cómo se va a securizar ese entorno cloud, va, vamos a tener que poner una herramienta en cloud para que lo securice, y, y de la misma manera concienciar a todo, y concienciar a todo la, el personal de, de los distintos departamentos de la compañía para que se vea, oye, esta herramienta va a estar aquí, hay que usarla de esta manera. Entonces, cada vez más, en todas las áreas de la compañía, a la hora de, de, de tener un nuevo proyecto, siempre está la validación del departamento de seguridad de cualquier, de cualquier nuevo proyecto que estas compañías vayan a implementar. Y esto es algo muy positivo. Entonces, contra más eh, tengamos esa responsabilidad compartida, contra más involucremos al equipo de ciber de cada una de las compañías antes de eh, llevar cada tipo de proyecto, eh, mejor resultado tendremos. Aparte, por supuesto, de, del tema de educa pur puramente educativo, de cómo, de cómo minimizar riesgos en el uso de plataformas as a service, que es algo que, que una vez más, esta situación, por hilarlo también con el tema del teléfono, una vez más, esta situación en la que nos encontramos eh, ha, ha puesto en evidencia no se pueden tener soluciones de service para un uso determinado, sino tiene que estar bien pensado para saber cómo tenemos que securizar ese entorno, desde dónde se va a utilizar ese entorno, ese entorno qué perfiles van a acceder a él y poder segurizar toda esta, toda esta infraestructura. Al final es un tema de responsabilidad compartida. Hmm. Peter, and about this risk that we can detect when these departments, these areas, different areas from IT um, control their own software as a service applications that they don't have control from the security controls by the company. So uh, how do you think that we... One of the good things that the cloud has brought us is the fact that we have um, uh, the ability to use an API And in current network designs, people have accepted the usage of API as common and accepted. And the whole world kind of uh, agreed on the fact that if we do it uh, using a RESTful API, we have a common standard. So with that, we see that orchestrated processes are being built and that uh, no vendor or no technology or function is a standalone siloed solution anymore, but rather everything is a cog in a larger machine. Similar thing with uh, software as a service. So um, Office 365 is, or Microsoft 365 is a, is a good example in here. They don't allow you to approach email security like we used to do in the past, which is uh, being a man in the middle and um, then in basically capturing all email, doing whatever we need to do. Uh, I think we have a bit of an overlap here with, uh, with FireEye where we both provide sandboxing type of services. And, um, and then send the traffic on to where it needs to be. What cloud vendors realized or, or SaaS vendors realized is they are good at what they offer, which is functionality. They're not necessarily really good at security. And those vendors have accepted that fact and created means of interfacing with third parties, which focus on something specific and then allow them to offer that level of expertise on that level. So. Before the email arrives to a Microsoft 365 mailbox, we get the traffic offered by the cloud environments. We, as a vendor, get to scale the environment so we always have enough horsepower to deal with it and then do what we need to do. And it's actually easier for the consumers, for the customers to, uh, uh, to appreciate as quite often it's a matter of a web UI, a few clicks and things go forward. Now, email is obviously the first uh, target that you would imagine, 
but we see it branching out and, and when we speak about this some customers don't even realize they've been using cloud-based services so if we talk uh, to customers about securing their dropbox environment or their salesforce.com environment they're all services based out of the cloud uh, sap is a great example of course they're all services based out of the cloud and deserve a certain level of security because what you're finally trying to protect is your business continuity and your business continuity might be in the value of data or in the value of being capable of offering a service to allow people to do purchasing with you but effectively this is the part that you're trying to protect and, and maybe one attack vector that people don't think about so easily is um, and this is more public cloud than software as a service related but if you look at the level of attacks today uh, what people are looking for is either data or uh, power because both equal money if you can get hold of a cloud environment and you can uh, install bitcoin mining type of uh, of malware you basically use somebody else's budget to create money for yourself and this is where we often don't think about uh, what's going on in SaaS services for instance uh, what we've seen, we, we recently uh, uh, released a blog on that, which was called the Florentine Bankers Group, which was an elaborate phasing attack, uh, getting control over a mailbox and then starting to reply as if you were the actual uh, other side of the communication flow. And they only started doing that after analyzing what the cultural usage of wording and formats and things like that was and uh, finally setting themselves up to, um, uh, at the moment of a large financial transaction, to obviously get hold of the money and, uh, and escape again. So um, even SaaS, while it looks, uh, again, you know, it's, it's Microsoft, so it must be secure and it's not in my data center, so it's not my worry. In the end, it is, because even in, in a SaaS type of service, there, is, there are elements in there that belong to you and that you have a responsibility for to protect. So technology is, again, uh, identity uh, management, encryption of data, but also uh, encryption of the process that handles all of your important uh, data that's flowing through is a very important topic. And um, I see a tendency uh, in the market at the moment that as security vendors, we again have to educate our customers and say, look, you took it away from your data center on premises and you put it in the cloud. And does that, does that mean you have been relieved from the needs to secure your data? We think not, but the reality is we, we do see that this happens. And uh, partially that's because uh, it's, it's a different set of people doing this. And uh, this leads back to education again. So even in SaaS, while you have less control, uh, you have not been relieved from uh, your responsibility to secure your own data and tooling actually exists. So uh, it's obviously an evolving market, but uh, most certainly uh, one, um, like, like David said, full of opportunities. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I see that probably the, the awareness and uh, education uh, is very important in this area. What do you think, uh, David? Yeah, I think, uh, as you said, uh, Igor, uh, awareness, education are pretty important, but uh, I will also say that uh, probably we need to take it uh, with a 10,000 feet overview. Uh, we need to be able also to apply the right rules and the right processes uh, in order to ensure that companies are not doing any shadow IT or shadow applications and all those kind of stuff. We need to be able to find the right balance in between being agile and being secure. And I know it's not easy because sometimes uh, the, the shortcut is really to go straight forward on the agility direction because it's quite easy. You click and it works. And one of the challenges that you want and we want and we are looking uh, when, when we are talking with our customers is really on how to apply the right policies uh, in the cloud workloads. And I think it's all around understanding the policy of the company. If you build up a policy based on the triangle, detect, protect, and react, we need to, you need to apply the same rules in the cloud and on-prem. The way that you will apply the rules might change because you are not using the same vehicle. However, if you decided already on your um, security policy to define rules, get visibility, 
being able to assess, to measure, and to enforce the security uh, policies, you need to do it in the cloud. You need to be able to equip yourself in order to get the full visibility and understand what has been deployed, how it has been deployed, and which type of rules are applied. And this is what we did at FireEye when we acquired a cloud visory uh, with the idea of being able to get the full visibility and to drive compliance and enforcement on the cloud platform. When you get this first overview, you need to move forward to the assessment. You need to measure and to compare the level of security in your cloud workload. And this is also what we did with the security validation platform. And I think this is one of the new markets that everybody will heard about uh, for the next years, being able to assess and measure the security effectiveness on the platform will be key for all companies. It will be key, first of all, to be compliant, second, to understand what are the risks, and third, also to rationalize uh, the cost. Because if you understand exactly what you are doing and how you are doing it, at the end of the day, you know how to do it better. And right now, it's probably one of the challenge in our market is that you are deploying product, you are trying to secure, but you are not really assessing yourself outside of a red teaming or pen testing every six months. The idea of security validation platform in general is really to be able to assess on a continuous way your security posture. And when you are, when you are finding any gaps, you might adapt and change and enforce if needed. And again, I will come back to the first layer. The first layer is, first of all, you need to put in place the rules of engagement, the policies, and you need to be able to be equipped to get the right visibility to understand where are you standing compared to your policies. You cannot guess. You need to get facts. And in this case, you need to be able to collect all the information, to grab the information back, to see what happened, and to take the right decision in terms of enforcement and policies. And I think this is uh, really how to tackle uh, this kind of discussion on uh, the cloud security in the business unit. You need to have like a single team somewhere uh, in the company or even as a service who will be able to discover all the workload to run and define the right policies and to assess yourself against those policies. And if you are not fitting with the policies, just enforce, block, or delay the workload in order to stay secure. Mm. Well, thank you, David. Yeah, this is one of the questions that I, I, this is the last one. It's talking about the, the market of uh, cloud security. Okay. Because one of the grandes, la, grandes eh, capacidades que tiene la nube es de automatizar es bueno, o, o poner funciones de seguridad rápidamente, ¿no? como detección y respuesta. Por ejemplo, soluciones con feeds de IOTs, ¿eh? correlando actividades de, para detectar ataques o detectar malware o directamente detectar en, en minería de bitcoins. ¿no? Eh, riesgos que podemos tener en la nube fácilmente eh, se puede desplegar soluciones de seguridad hoy en día. ¿no? Eh, no es tan complicado como parece. Es algo que ya incluso los propias compañías que proveen de plataformas cloud lo hacen. Ellos ofrecen servicios de ciberseguridad o soluciones directamente de ciberseguridad que las puedes aplicar. Eh, y esto va dirigido un poco a vosotros como fabricantes, grandes compañías mundiales de ciberseguridad que vendéis eh, soluciones de seguridad en la nube también. Eh, ¿Cómo veis? Eh, ¿Qué complementos aportaría un fabricante? ¿Cómo complementaríamos soluciones que ya vosotros disponéis en el mercado eh, con, con, con lo que ya proveen las plataformas en, en nube, ¿no? en cloud, eh, los mismos por servicios de ciberseguridad. ¿Cómo se afrontaría esta combinación de los, de los modelos? ¿Y qué tú opinas? Bueno, desde, luego, sí, sí. desde luego, desde el punto de, desde nuestro punto de vista, eh, es fundamental, eh, y es nuestra estrategia, el Edge to Cloud de Aruba, el ser capaz de, de tener el, el, el cero atrás desde, desde el edge hasta el cloud y ser capaz de orquestarlo y automatizarlo. Para nosotros el SOAR eh, es nuestro ABC, el Security Orchestration Automation and Response es absolutamente fun, eh, fundamental y, y esto somos, somos capaces de hacerlo para, para darle un, un servicio global y una visibilidad y una, eh, y una orquestación independientemente de las diferentes eh, plataformas, tanto en premise como en cloud, que dispone el cliente de seguridad, que cada vez va siendo una herramienta más compleja con teniendo que atacar ambos mundos. Imaginemos un, 
eh, un usuario corporativo que se conecta a través de su conexión VPN del fabricante X, eh, bueno, pues hace ser acceso remoto, tiene esa primera autenticación de usuario y de máquina, ya estamos eh, eh, orquestando esa autenticación, Hay un, este elemento ya lo está visualizando. Eh, imaginamos que hacemos una, una validación mediante NPS o, o, o hacemos una validación de multifactor eh, en Azure, por ejemplo, eh, por, por tocar un tema cloud, eh, notificamos al 100 si el endpoint es corporativo, si no es corporativo, y este 100 será un fabricante tercero que puede estar en cloud premise y esa notificación la tenemos y orquestada. Eh, autorizamos eh, a este eh, usuario en función del estado eh, que nos marca el agente tiene un agente instalado o no lo tiene, que puede ser el FireEye o puede ser otro fabricante, eh, y vemos el estado de ese agente y con, el, con ese resultado proseguimos en, esa, en ese Edge to Cloud eh, y decidimos, bueno, pues abrir un ticket en, en una herramienta de, de ticketing para que, para que haya una provisión de ese agente. ¿vale? Todo este proceso está automatizado y orquestado. Analizamos el posture de, 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 ese, de ese cliente con una solución en GAR, con una solución, uh, en este caso podría ser de Aruba perfectamente, con ese, con, ese, con ese posture, pues notificamos de nuevo al CIEM, eh, si el endpoint eh, tiene parches, no tiene parches, está actualizado, qué situación tiene eh, en función de lo que nos ha dado, la notificación se queda ahí y a partir de ahí hacemos unos eventos de, de seguridad y notificación diferentes, pues tanto a la asignación de políticas de seguridad a ese propio acceso VPN del fabricante que sea, como a esa asignación de roles de acceso en los propios eh, firewalls del perímetro o firewalls internos o donde se encuentren aquellos firewalls porque de, de checkpoint, por ejemplo, que, pod que podrían ser. Todo este proceso de, de, de Let's to Cloud es lo que nosotros eh, somos capaces de orquestar dentro de un usuario en Aruba, eh, independientemente del resto de fabricantes que se encuentren en, en, todo, en todo ese proceso. Esto es un ejemplo tipo de cómo se va a conectar un cliente eh, desde el principio a, a cualquier plataforma de service todo este proceso. Pasamos por todos estos fabricantes y eso obvia, obviamente tiene que estar orquestado, autenticado, uh, para poder dar una respuesta adecuada en cada momento y poder hablar con cada uno de los fabricantes que, que forman parte del proceso, tanto en premis como en cloud, del edge al cloud. Mm. Gracias, Iker. Peter, how do you think? Uh, did, uh, do you, your solutions compete or complement with the cloud service providers? security solutions because they have their own and probably you are selling something um, uh, similar that they are using or not so first of all we've we've been we were created in 1993 and uh, we were back then uh, uh, starting to build focused security software in a market that uh, said well we have access lists so why do we need a firewall um, and even today i think we we of course in a different context but we will still see similar approaches so basic technology levels uh, will obviously be required access control is a given you need to do segmentation um, that's not necessarily where our strength is today and comparing to the cloud vendors we see that uh, their customers are forcing them to to work more on security so um, specifically uh, public cloud vendors they will have tooling around um, what they call security. Uh, security, however, is a very big umbrella name and can capture a lot of elements inside. So it could be a configuration set, it could be appropriate routing, it could be appropriate sizing or versioning or things like that. And quite often, a lot of the security tooling that we see in public clouds is, uh, is based around that. So an ability to provide logging, an ability to provide uh, an inventory, and to see how you match up. Um, for companies like our own, uh, it's, uh, it's our responsibility to show value. Um, the best thing I can do to technical people to revert them to is ask them, okay, come up with a third party that says who uh, has assessed your security quality. So not the speed or the price or the usability, but the security quality. Um, this is done by a few third parties outside there in the market, and, and we happen to perform well in that. But secondary, which is maybe even more important, is I know few customers that focus on one cloud vendor only and will continue to do so in the future. So the future for every single customer out there is going to be a at least hybrid cloud environment, so something on-premises and something in the public cloud, but more probably a multi-cloud environment 
where uh, you have cloud technology in the local network, but you will also have multiple types of public cloud offerings that are coming your way. And here is where the big differentiator will come in, as no single public cloud vendor or private cloud vendor is going to offer you a security tool that encompasses everything that you're trying to do. And with all of the complexities that we already see in trying to, to fix everything together, because the APIs are great, but they're different in every single cloud and in every single application and in the speed of which things are changing, you basically don't have the time to figure it out. So our strength is going to be, on one hand, based on the threat intelligence that we can offer, so the ability to monitor over hundreds of thousands of customers what's going on on, uh, on a security level and offer that back to customers and uh, address any shape or form or design that customers will be making using cloud technology, whether it's public or private, and set them down into a driver's seat that says, I can roll out a consistent security policy and I will get back consistent security information that allow me to act whenever I need it. Obviously, we need to amend that with the appropriate tooling. Uh, and here again, uh, security posture management, uh, and I'll name the examples again, Azure and, uh, and AWS, they are really, really different. There's no way you can create a policy like uh, a CISO would like to that says, Here's our approach to public clouds. Make sure it's applied. If you have to use every native tooling in order to find out, you will spend a lot of time and work on trying to get it done. Whereas third party tooling could uh, put you in a driver's seat that says, I can roll this out and somebody else is taking care of this for me. So uh, usability is going to be uh, a key factor here as well for customers to find out. And more and more, we see that happening where people initially want to get started in the cloud and then they figure out, I need to do more, I need to do more. I need to have appropriate technology, just like I did in my physical network in the past. And um, uh, it's going to be a balance, obviously, and you want to weigh the investment versus the, um, the, 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 the elements that you're trying to protect. And that's something that we, we do a lot with customers. We try to do ROI calculations, try and figure out uh, what you need to do. I feel the big benefit of being a software organization like Checkpoint is uh, we can be a native fit into an environment that's built on software defined networking, which is, which is the basis for any cloud technology that says we can grow if we need to, but we can also shrink if we need to. So you're really helping customers transition from an ownership model to a consumption-based model. And that's truly important when you have this conversation. Why would I want to consume security? I don't want to buy a big gateway. That's fine. You actually don't have to. We can provide just the right amount that you need right here. Uh, and that's going to be quite a journey. We'll be, we'll be doing that for the next couple of years. Mm. Uh, thanks, Peter. Yeah. Um, sure. David. Um, about Peter said that, uh, of course, the security solutions that the cloud vendors offers is not enough. We need to complement probably that you have your own solutions uh, that uh, are based on cloud. And I think that uh, combined perfectly with other security solutions that uh, the cloud provider can can give us. And um, how do you combine this or do you compete, as I asked before, uh, Peter? I would say we we some sometimes we we might compete uh, sometimes we might we might compete. it really depends and I will try to take an example uh, I hope it will be fully understood by uh, by everybody but uh, I will take a, a French example uh, you can buy a baguette a bread uh, in the supermarket or in the bakery at the end of the day you are buying the baguette uh, but the quality and the expertise will be different and I think this is where. Uh, FireEye uh, will, will bring the added value. We are a security provider by DNA. We are working on security 24 by seven. It's our job. Our job is to be agnostic, to understand all type of clouds and to be able to provide the right level of visibility, assessment, security, and even to help customers during the forensics and investigation phases. And, and I think this is the biggest differences between uh, the cloud provider and the security provider, uh, as we are at FireEye, uh, we are really the expert on the subject. 
we are working on the security, uh, as I said, on a 24 by 7 basis. And this is clearly where we are giving the most of the added value to our customers. Last but not least, and, uh, and um, it has been said uh, just before, um, we need to be agnostic. You know, I know some customers who are using only one cloud, but in general, uh, you have like a several cloud uh, workload, internal, external, and even, uh, even uh, I would say, in-house built uh, cloud. And you need to get uh, a full visibility and a full understanding uh, all over all those cloud workloads. And this is where we will bring uh, a lot of added value. And I will say just uh, to conclude, because I'm conscious that we are running out of time right now, but uh, we, we are yeah. experts in security, and this is probably where uh, we are bringing the best, uh, the biggest difference. We know what happened in the field. We know the reality uh, during investigation, and this is how we learn how to protect our customers. Mm. Okay. Thank you, David. Well, thank you, three of us. Gracias a los tres por estar en esta sesión. Bueno. Eh, ya hemos estado un rato hablando y ha sido muy interesante hablar en el entorno yeah, cloud. Yeah. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias a vosotros. Gracias, Igor, David, Peter e Iker, por vuestro interesante panel sobre cloud, que no tengo duda de que los, los asistentes han disfrutado.